Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our next playthrough. In this playthrough, we're going to be playing the cooperative adventure card game of Intrigue and Investigation, Victoriana. And it is by Games Afoot and it was kickstarted recently and has come to my door. We're going to play this game and have some fun with it. It is a cooperative game, as I said, which means it can easily be played solo. Though I'm not playing it solo, I'm playing it with two characters. I don't know if that's the way it's meant to be played, but I like showing the way the game would normally be played when you have multiple people. Because that's the most common game mode. Now, I have most of the game set up already, so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the characters... And I think that's one of those things where I'm just going to very lightly cover what the rules are, and then we're going to get into some gameplay. Because there's actually quite a bit to set up, so I did it in advance, and I'll just kind of give you the, the end parts of that, because there's a couple things that we still have to do. And right before we get started with the gameplay, we will do those things. So, what are we trying to do? Well, we are in the service of the Queen of England, and I can't remember the exact year, but it's not new. It's, it's about the time of Sherlock Holmes and all that good stuff. In fact, that's one of the characters we're going to play today. Um, and we are trying to solve a, um, a nefarious plan. We're trying to, to uh, make sure it doesn't happen. There's a terrible plan happening. There's a mastermind and some henchmen, and we don't know who they are. We just know that it's coming. So we have to investigate and plot and and deal with crises and follow leads, and uh, you know get rid of and, and just and isolate the plot that's happening and try and figure out who is behind this evil plan. And that's what we're going to do in this game today. And in doing so, we're going to be traveling about the various locations of London and looking for a couple things. It's kind of got. <laughs> Even though it's a lot more in depth than Clue, it's kind of got like a, a who done it Clue type uh, end result to it, where you have to uncover the uh, the uh, mastermind, you have to uncover the plot, and you have to find out where the plot is going to take place, and uh, that's how you win the game. That is the only way you win the game uh, is by defeating the plot, the mastermind in the location. So uh, we have to get there. We have 21 turns to do it before the, the plan uh, takes hold, and we can't change course. So let's uh, talk about, we're going to talk about our characters first, and then we'll talk about the rules. And I'm not going to go over the rules with the characters, it'll make sense to you. But basically, there's we have a number of resources we're going to spend to do things. And some characters are better with certain resources than others, and some of them have special, well, they all have special abilities. We'll cover the turn order and all the decks of cards and everything that's going around the table. And uh, I think you'll get most of it as we play. Uh, amazingly, even though there's a lot of setup and there's a lot going on, it's not mechanically that difficult. Uh, the, the, the game turns are pretty straightforward and simple, so that's a good thing. Up here you see two decks. You see a deck with henchmen. And uh, I'm not going to show you what's in this deck yet because I've randomly selected. There's quite a few of them too, so this is not going to be too much of a spoiler, but I've randomly selected three henchmen and a mastermind, and that's this deck right here. And this is, these are our plots. These are the evil plots we have to isolate down to one, and we'll get there eventually. We have to try and get through to them, get rid of them, and see what the plot is that we have to overcome. So that's that's the crux of it. Now, doing so, as I said, we have only a certain amount of time, and this uh, the Tower of London is going to tick away, and we're going to lose hours. And once this is all gone, we have gone kaput and also you see that there's this track here this is for leads that have gone cold you see we're going to take stress on ourselves um uh it's not called stress it's called something else but i'll remember what it is before as we start playing so i can use the right terminology called trauma and we're going to to uh, have trauma happen if our leads that we're following become cold or grow cold on us because we didn't get to them in time and in fact you see those four first leads right there we'll explain how they work but let's uh, let's um Let's go to the board and you see that right there there's a one, uh, two, three, four. Those are the leads. There are also corresponding numbers out on the board in the locations where they're at. We have to get to those and uncover them before the, the trail goes, grows cold on us. If we do so and we succeed against them, then we get some benefits. If we fail, we, uh, we again, the lead's gone cold on us and we start to suffer some trauma because we're getting stressed out as we race toward the end of this uh, the conclusion, which could be good or bad depending on how well we do. In doing so, we're going to be using uh, two characters. The first one's going to be Sherlock Holmes. He is uh, a red hero. I believe red is the the, the cool thing is the uh, there's it tells you everything on here. So um, you know our res those are our resources, but they mean different things. I think uh, it's um, science, occult, politics, and something else. Um, I can't remember what the gun is. I'll have to remember in the rule book. But anyway, um, here, let me get that out and just tell you. It is Occult Underworld, that's the red, uh, Politics and Science. 
And so you thought the guns might be combat, but it, I knew it wasn't. That's why I wanted to double check. Anyway, you can see that Sh Sherlock Holmes starts with a number of resources. That's what these are. He started with six uh, underworld, three science, and three political. Now, his speciality is um, underworld. It says, my name is Sherlock Holmes. It is my business to know what other people don't know. Uh, this is from the Adventures of the Blue, uh, the Blue uh, Carbuncle. And it says he's got two abilities. Now, this is his trauma track right here. It goes up. We can become killed. By the way, eliminated killed. So we got to be really careful about that. You can actually have your characters eliminated from the game. Uh, abilities. This is a really good one. Now that loop means its ability can always use. It says the beginning of your turn, you may reveal one lead in play. That means we can look at the lead and see what it is. We can see what we have to do before we get there. That is really, really powerful. And it doesn't require an action or any of his tokens. But this one does. This Master of Disguise. This is exchange one of your, your resources for a resource of any other type. But when we do that, we're going to give up one of these tokens and we won't be able to get them back. And that is uh, Sherlock Holmes. Really powerful. The character is going to be Emma Blakeney the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yeah, that's right. And so there's all kinds of characters in the game. There's everybody from um, Mr. Griffin, the Invisible Man. Uh, just to give you an idea, the Invisible Man, uh, Aleister Crowley, um, Ada Lovelace, and Charlie, Charlie Babbage, uh, Dion Fortune, um, William Stead and Miss X, uh, Captain Nemo, Sir Richard Burton, and Wilhelmina Harker. Yep, the Wilhelmina Harker. Also, we got some so the bonus ones from the Kickstarter, which are Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and uh, there's another one. It is the Time Traveler, and those have some different rules with them. But we're going to be playing with the Scarlet Pimpernel. Um, anyway, her resources, she's political. She has specialties of either political or um, uh, underworld, whichever she has more of. So right now we're tied. We're not good at either, but if we get rid of, for some reason I get rid of a political, now I'm... My specialty is Underworld. Uh, it says, They seek him here, they seek him there. These Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven or is he in hell? That damned elusive Pimpernel. Well, it's a woman, so that's pretty cool, right? Uh, and her abilities are Duelist Extraordinaire. It says, You are immune, immune to the effects of agents, agents and henchmen. I mean, she can't be impacted by them. That's really good. Uh, and then it says, Friends in High Places is her special ability. You may uh, rewind a lead one half turn or make another investigator immune to the effects of an agent and henchman for one turn. And that's pretty cool as well. You can see that she's got her, her tokens there ready to go uh, to spend on that. But that's uh, that's basically our two characters that we're going to be playing. Like I said, there's a bunch more, but those are the, I drew them randomly, and that's the ones I got. So we're going to play with those. Now let's talk about a game round. So player's turn. First thing we're going to do is we're going to move our investigators. You can see that we can we, uh, we can move th up to three spaces. If we want to, we can suffer two trauma and move um, once per turn to gain, an e gain one extra movement. That could be important. I don't know. We'll have to see. I've never played this before. This is a blind playthrough. Uh, and then we can perform one of these things. We can investigate a lead. You saw how that works. We have to be in a location where a lead is located and we can investigate it. And it says you may end your movement on a locale with a lead token. Um, suffer stress to take the three random resources from the, the bag and keep one. That's an option. We don't have to do that. Or we can use a local ability. Some of these locations, well, a number of these locations have an ability on them that we can do. It's usually gathering resources or doing some special thing that will help us advance the leads and actions we're doing. Um, then the last thing we do is we reveal a t the, the locale token. So remember, we're investigating the areas for the layer. Out of all 30 tokens, 31 tokens on the board, there's one X, and that is the layer. So we have to uncover them all until we get to that X. Yeah, that is a player's turn. Now, after a player's turn, there's also a, let's, a conclusion of the round order, which we will follow. I'll put that right there. This is when the player holding the end of round marker it, it, it completes their turn. That was, uh, as you saw, there's a big giant marker sitting next to uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel. She has the end of round marker. It says advance the time token one space. Now this is every two turns. So it doesn't matter if we have four players. This can still happen every every two actions of the player. So uh, um, Sherlock goes, then then the Pimpernel goes, and then we advance, then blah, 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 so on and so forth. Okay. And if there were four players, it would be two go, then advance, two go, then advance. So uh, if the time token reaches 12 o'clock position, reveal the next hour token. That means we start to lose time in a big way. 
It says rotate all active lead cards. I told you they count down, and basically, if they go to they read they go back to uh, midnight, they we lose them. They become uh, cold leads. And it says discard cold leads. We got that. Agents pursue now. There's the, when the agent comes out, if if and when an agent comes out, which there will, then they'll start to pursue us, and that's bad. And then we're going to pass the end of the round marker if necessary. In two-player game, we don't do that. And then as, in, it, the last thing we're going to do is play proceeds with the, the next player goes back around. And then we also have uh, uh, some rules on generating new leads. I'll just show you that as we play when the new leads come out. So uh, there's a bunch of other things to talk about, like how I built the decks and all that good stuff. I'll talk about one of them and just give you an idea. So as I said, there is quite a bit to the setup of this. You can see we have four decks. We have occult, politics, science, and underworld, right? Just like like the game, the, the, the resources we have. Now these are all the different leads that could possibly enter the game. And as we clear out ones, more of these are going to come into play. Within these, there is also something called um, a... Uh, Oh gosh, gotta remember all the terms. Um, hold on, let me just tell you what it is real quick. Uh, they are um, um, advantages and setbacks. So within these decks, in each deck, there are two advantages and two setbacks. And these are special uh, enhancements or problems that we can face during the game. I've shuffled them into these. Each one had 20 cards and it went up to 24, so that's what's in there now. And as we advance the game, more will come out. And the ones that we don't use as we advance, you'll see, they go out of the game. They're gone. So there's quite a bit of replayability in this as far as all the different stuff that can happen. But those are those decks, and again, those were specially set up with those rules in mind. Now also in our Evil Plots card, there is an agent. There's also an agent here to the side of the board, which will come out um, on a, when something special happens. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You also see these four tracks. This card here, we're going to turn over as we enter play and it's going to reveal one of these tracks for us, and we're going to move up one. We're going to gain a benefit on one of those immediately, and then this will just go out of the game. So that's pretty cool, because when we get these, you see that we gain bonuses for advancing on these tracks, um, and they, of course, correspond to the different things, occult, politics, science, and underworld. And uh, as we get them, they like we hit here, they're, we're all, investors, all investigators are going to gain a occult resource. We don't have any occult resources right now. Good thing the Scarlet Pimpernel has some wild resources. Uh, and then you see it gets up here, the cost to defeat changes. There's think the, Then you get way up here to five, and all the occults are, are wilds. And you see that these run in a similar, uh, similar pace, but they give you different things. Like this one says each investigator may avoid suffering a trauma once per turn. And then this one says all investigators heal trauma when it hits there. So there's lots of ways to do that. And of course there's this one. As an action, an investigator may suffer trauma to use any local ability. That's pretty good. Um, and we can use the local abilities once anyway, but uh, that gives you the extra option to do it at that moment in time when we cross that track. Uh, so why don't we just do this now? Since we're here, we're going to uncover this and then I can explain a plot to you. Here it is. This is uh, an occult plot, actually. So we're going to go up on the occult track. One. There we go. Uh, that's okay for us. Neither, of us, especially since neither of us have occult, we'll get some occult tokens. Uh, so we know that the plot is not this. Seventh broken seal. It says, um, "Lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, and sackcloth of hair, as sackcloth of hair." And the moon became as blood. Revelation 6.12. Now, I'm um, sorry about reading that. The print is really, really small. Actually, I knew that quote. Um, and to see that when we reveal the final uh, plot, right, this is what it would take to, to end that plot. So we would need to spend one, two, three, four, five of the, of the occult tokens to break the plot. Now, we know that this one is no longer in the game. I'm just going to discard it. But it did put us up on that track. So that kind of gives you an idea of how these plots work. Now, we're going to spend most of our game getting rid of the plots, and we're not going to deal with them. And there's lots of ways to do that. Do that. You'll see, it's, uh, when we do the investigating, investigating the lead actions, you'll see how that goes. You will. Okay, now let's talk about... Uh, um, is there one more thing? Yeah, we are going to reveal a henchman as part of the start of the game, so let's do that as well. So way up here at the top of the board, you see that we're going to reveal the first henchman. Now, I just want to double check something. I think that uh, I do think that we're going to do whatever it says, even in this first moment of the game. But let's uh, let's see a setup. One of the last things you do is reveal the first henchman. So I, I did it a little out of order. We sh we're supposed to reveal that plot 
that I showed you right after the henchman, but that's okay. So just turn over the henchman card and follow its effects. Yes, so we're going to do that, and that is this right here. So we're going to follow the first henchman's card. What is it? Uh, it's Rasputin, the Mad Monk. He's the first henchman that comes out. When defeated, shuffle Rasputin into the plot deck. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, if revealed, um, oh, if revealed when earning, uh, this is, i got to get them with all these terms. There's lots of little terms in this. These are called um, um, uh, bah, 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 um, deductions. That's what the the that uh, hour or the magnifying glass is called. He counts against the number earned, then reshuffle him into the plot deck. Before we can repent, we have to sin. Rasputin. Now, see the symbols right here. I want to get rid of him because he's not good, right? He's a bad dude, and he messes with our stuff. But when we defeat him, he goes in the plot. But I have to get rid of him to get to the to the mastermind. To do that. I have to have investigated and taken as evidence to spend a um, a, a lead that's occult-based, pol political-based, and underworld-based. Now, I can have that between the two characters. And then I have to go to him, which we're going to determine where he is right now, and uh, defeat him, which kind of sucks because that's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, right? Sorry, he doesn't go out on the board. That's the agents. He's just there causing mischief. We have to defeat him. He's protecting the identity of the uh, mastermind, the villain. So he has been revealed. We have revealed the final plot, which means we get to start our turn. So in this video, I will take a turn, maybe two, depending on how long this video goes, and we'll see how this game plays out. Now, remember, please, please remember that this is a blind playthrough. I have read the rules. There's very little to watch on this game so far. There was uh, Rado did uh, a quick playthrough of this back when it was kickstarted. With uh, uh, you know prototype components and a lot of things that weren't that are different than then than they are now, um, so we'll have to a lot of the similar mechanics are there, but we'll have to see how this plays out. So let's get on with our turns. We're going to start with our obviously the master of of crime solving, Sherlock Holmes. I think we're going to automatically do. Um, I can't imagine why he wouldn't do this. We're automatically going to turn over one of the leads, right? So let's take a look at the board and see which one we would want to reveal for him. Now, right now you can see that, let me slide over a little bit, they're mostly all over. So we got one here, we got one, two, three, and four. So the one closest to him is this four. So I think we're going to reveal that one in case he wants to go to it. So we're going to use his special ability of new newspaper archives. At the beginning of your turn, you may reveal one lead in play. Let's do that. Now, to the best of my knowledge, he is the only one that has the ability to do this. So we're going to take a look at it. Now, we still have to keep track of time on it. That's for sure. But, we're, but uh, we still get we do at least get to know what it is. It says, oh, so it's a red one. This is good because he's good at that. He does want to go deal with this one. It says hysterical, uh, hysterical Topher. Um, we got a couple things we can do. We can hear her out, which requires us to spend a, um, a underworld and a science to gain a uh, whatever they call them. And I will eventually remember the terms completely, but not as of yet, a deduction, which means that we can uh, deduce um, and get rid of plots, right? That's what that means when we get deductions. We can hypnotize her. I don't know why we'd want to do that one. It Oh, because it just gives us different resources, but it costs more. So we could absolutely do both of those. Uh, well, we can't because we don't have any purple, so we can't do any occult ones. Or we can get her list of clients. We can do two... Um, Two underworld and a science to gain to destroy two of the plots, or, or, we can do none of that. We can do this first one here, and take it as evidence instead. And remember, to kill Rasputin, we need to have red evidence. So I think um, the best thing we can do is start that way. But we're not there yet. We have to get there. So we know what we need to do. We're going to flip this back over because technically, because we got to keep track of the time on it. But we're going there to deal with that as. Sherlock Holmes. Question of the day is, can he get there? I believe he can. So, they both start here at New Scotland Yard, where they were asked by the Queen to help investigate this nefarious plot. By the way, New Scotland Yard has a special ability. We can take two tokens of our choice and two from the bag. Um, at random, there's a bag, yes, with tokens in them. Um, but we have to burn one of those tokens. In a two-player game, we have four of them. It's a great resource for us. We're not going to do that, though. Obviously, we're going to move. We're going to go one, two, and three right to this four location where we are in fact going to investigate that lead because that is very very valuable to us so let's uh well heck let's do that get it over with okay here is our lead so we're going to spend one of these 
and a science. Boom. And we're going to we're going to um, hear her out. So we heard her out. She gave us some useful evidence. Again, I could have got rid of some plot cards, but we'll do that as we go. I, I know that this is going to help us, though. So now here's the cool thing. Since we are, th this is another advantage we have. This, when I spend this as evidence, let's say I don't use it to kill Rasputin. Because this is his speciality, uh, this counts as a wild, so I can use it for anything. And that's very helpful, so it's good to get this. Now, what do we do with this? Well, all we do is we just slip it. I'm going to use this side of the board to do this just because it's it's clear. We're just going to slip it under there to show that we have evidence in our hand. Okay, I think there's our game topper because that's what we play on. Uh, so we have evidence that can support this. And that, that basically was his turn. So what do we do? We did this. We did... Uh, move our investigator three. We didn't burn any extra movement. And we performed one of these. We investigated a lead, right? And we could also use a locability. But the last thing we do is this. We're going to reveal uh, the locale token. So what locale are we in? Well, we're at uh, Freemasons Hall. It's an occult location, by the way. How do I know that? Because it says so right there. It also says it's a, uh, um, a uh, underworld location. So those are the specialities of the location. Now that matters when we're trying to gather new leads. And it also has a special ability. I'm not going to look at the special ability because we didn't use it right now. We'll look at it later. But, of course, it was a blank. So I'm just going to throw these in the trusty SpongeBob cup as we expose them. So we know that the plot is not happening at the Freemasons Hall. And that is going to be the end of the turn. Well, not exactly the end of the turn. Now we're going to have to set out a new, um, a new lead because we know that we succeeded at that one, right? Um, and uh, let's see... Okay, huh. all right, what are we going to do here? Uh, let's see, we, so we know that we're, in, okay, we used, this is, now here's how, <laughs> i got to explain this to you, because this is one of the things that's a little more complicated. I think this is the best way to explain this. So after successfully investigating a lead, generate a new lead as follows. Create a lead pile. We're going to take one card from the lead deck that matches the type, of the lead investigated. So that is a red card, which means we are going to pull one from here for our pile. That's the first one that goes up. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time investigating, uh, reading this over to you. I'm just going to do it this once so you understand it. And it says, uh, well, then we're going to pull one card from each lead deck matching the type shown on the locale. Well, we know that that is a cult. So we're just going to take an occult card, put that in there, and also another um, underworld card, right? So we know that. So that's that. And then we're going to then we're going to take one card from a lead deck of the investigator's choice that matches one of the resources spent in the investigation. If ne if no resources were spent, then that's okay. But we know they were, so we're going to take another uh, red card actually. So we have a choice of four cards. We know that three of them are going to be um, um, underworld cards, right? And we're going to shuffle this up. It says shuffle the, the pile up. And then we're going to roll a dice for where the new location is. But for right now, we're just simply going to take one of these four at random and place it down. Now, it says you can use tokens to help. Um, and the rest of these, the other three, go out of the game. I'm just going to make a little discard for them. Um, they are gone. Now, it says that you can take tokens out of the pool and listen until you need them to say what it could be. Now, we know that it's going to be either a... Uh, um, Underworld or an occult, but it's most likely to be um, an underworld card because we have more of those. So we'll just we could do that just to mark what it possibly could be, and it says we're allowed to do that. So uh, those those tokens don't do anything other than help us see where we need to go. But we have to roll some dice because we got to see where that token is now going or the lead rather. So we're going to place this lead. This is going to determine the color, and this is going to determine the number, and I'll show you how that works. So it's going to be a red eight. So what we're looking for is eight. Uh, a a um, underworld eight, and that is going to be. It's good to familiarize yourself with this because they are kind of scattered around. It is going to be at the underground fighting pit, which is right here. So this four token is going to swoop on over to this area right here, and that is where it's going to be. Now that officially ends the turn of Sherlock Holmes. Now we're going to go to the Scarlet Pumpernel, Pimpernel rather, and see what she can accomplish. Now let's see where she's at. She's mainly political. We don't know what the other leads are doing because we just uh, went after the one that Sherlock Holmes investigated. But there's lots of things we can do. She's got great resources, so I'm not afraid of taking a chance with her on one of the leads. I think we might do that to get these 
uh, wrapped up. Because remember, they're going to age on us pretty quickly. Um, I could stay there at Scotland Yard, take my turn there, and use the uh, ability of the yard to get some tokens, more tokens, which would be even better because it's it's not a bad um, it's not a bad place to start. And if you ever wonder what they do, it does in the back of the book it shows what each of the locations are. So um, if you look up, uh, where is it? Um, New Scotland Yard, it says, if any Scotland Yard tokens remain, gain two resources of your choice, then draw two and keep two random resources from the bag. You may only choose um, uh, wild resources if your investigator begins the game with them. Well, she does. So we could get, we could take the two as, of our choice as wilds. So I think we'll do that because we do have a little time. Remember, all of them started at midnight. We have a little time to investigate. Um, I think we're going to stay at Scotland Yard. Okay, there's nothing wrong with lingering. It doesn't cause any ill effects to us or anything. So what are we going to do? We're going to activate. We're going to. We're not going to move, and we're going to use the special ability of the investigating lead. Now I'm going to double check. I don't think we have to move, but I'm just going to double check that just to be sure um, on the turn actions. Let's see. Uh, investigators are permitted three moves per turn. Now, that to say, I don't think you have to. I don't think there's anything telling you that you need to move. I think you can stay put if you want. Each investigator is permitted a minimum, a maximum of three movement per turn. Investigators may move through the city. Investigators may not. Okay. Enter a locale. It doesn't connect. Yep. There's no, no uh, requirement for us to move. So we are going to burn one of these tokens right away. And in doing so, we're going to get two resources. So I'm going to take two... Um, wild resources for her. This will set her up to be able to manage a really good, uh, um, any base probably set her up to manage just about any of the leads that we have available to us. Then there's this bag and there's, there's a, a series of tokens. There's not that many in here, enough to satisfy that, but we're going to grab two out. So the first one is going to be, oh good, a combat one. That means she's now, her speciality is um, uh, underworld, at least for the moment. And it will stay that way because her next one was purple, an occult token. So what does that mean for her? It means she has a heck of a lot of resources. She's going to be in a good position to do something in her next turn. Uh, it's, I know it feels like it might be a waste of a turn, but it really isn't. And you can see how difficult this is too, right, to get ahead because we are, or two uh, turn, will be two player turns in. And all I've got is one thing to get against Rasputin, and that's it. But the last thing we're going to do is reveal this. And, of course, it is blank because the odds are against us at this point. And I believe that is going to be the end of the round. Let me just double-check some things. Okay, so now we are going to go to the end of round phase. Let's go check that out. This is going to be pretty tame at this moment in time. Here's how this works. So our, our marker here goes down by one. All of these then turn a quarter. If they ever make it back to midnight, they become cold. So that's why I said right now, if we're going to take a chance and gather some of the resources while these are uh, aging, this is a good time to do it. And that's where we're... Oh, wait, you know what I forgot when I put out this new one? This one might not be... This could change our decision, but it, I guess it's too late now. This one actually... Okay, well, good news is it is going to start that way. This die determines where the... Um, and I forgot about that, the, where the lead starts. So it's going to be like that. I hope... Uh, you didn't get frustrated before that and say, you're hey, screwing it up. So anyway, that's what happens with all of our leads. So we did that first step and second step. Uh, nothing reached the, so we rotated. We just got, we didn't have any cold leads. There's no agents. We passed the end of the round marker, but we're in a two-player game, so we don't. That means that the, the round's going to go back to Sherlock Holmes. And we're going to end this first video right here. So there's lots of things that are going to happen in the game. I know that uh, and I could have I could have gotten rid of some plots which would have advanced us on those tracks over there, um, but we didn't do that. I wanted to get start knocking out these leads. They're very important. They are these the the biggest path to success in the game. So uh, you know next turn the Scarlet Pimpernel she's going to leave Scotland Yard. She did some investigating there, got some great resources. Now she's going to go check out a lead, see if we can close them out. Same with our man um, Sherlock Holmes. He's probably going to stop by a place where he can do some uh, do some uh, um, resource acquisition or something on the way because he can't get all the way to those leads in one turn without damaging himself. And I don't know how easy it is to heal in this game, so I'm really reluctant to do that. But anyway, let me know what you think. This is Victoriana. It is, um, of course, there's occult and myth mysticism in this, so it's a it's kind of like a um, uh, a 
fantasy version of, of, of Victorian age London where we are investigating the nefarious plots of people, in this case right now, the henchman Rasputin. So we'll continue on and we'll figure it out. We do know that, that uh, the seventh seal being broken is not one of the plots we have to worry about. So take care, guys. I will see you in the next episode. I hope you're enjoying this, uh, Victoriana. Pretty cool game. Uh, I can't wait to play with others. This is, again, I broke it out first for you all before I got a chance to put it on the table with other folks and I'm doing a blind playthrough. I love doing blind playthroughs because it tells you, kind of gives you an idea of the pitfalls and the rules that you might encounter, maybe help you overcome them. So, uh, guys, thanks. See you in the next one. Bye.